So the next topic we want to look at is called implicit differentiation. Um, so implicit differentiation is, is a topic that for some students will be challenging, often because some of the problems will be a little bit um, algebraically challenging. There will be a fair amount of, of computational complexity that we haven't encountered uh, previously with the derivative problems we've looked at. Uh, but where we're at right now is that um, from the derivative rules we have, from the sum rule, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, um, we are in a position where we can compute the derivatives of, of the vast majority of the functions that we encounter um, in a course like calculus, at least single variable calculus. Right? Um, but of course, we know that there, there is a certain restriction that we're placing on ourselves when we say we're going to talk about functions. Right? Um, functions, if we think about the graph, right? the graph of a function, it has to pass the, the vertical straight line test. Right? Uh, we can't have two y values uh, corresponding to a single x value. Um, Nonetheless, uh, if, if we impose that restriction, you know, we can compute a derivative, we can plot the function, we know that the derivative is going to give us the slope of the tangent line to the graph at any point on that curve. Um, but it's not the only type of curve that we might consider, right? Perfectly valid to look at something like a circle, right? And a circle certainly has a well-defined tangent line at any point, right? And, and it would be reasonable to say that the slope of that tangent line should still describe the rate at which y is changing with respect to x, right? We should still have this y prime. Right? Um, and, and that should make sense. Of course, there are a few places where maybe we have a tangent line, but the slope is not defined, right? So there are two points on the circle um, where the tangent line is vertical. Slope is undefined, um, so it's not clear what we might be able to say about y prime in those cases. But otherwise, yeah, we should be able to say something. Um, so we know how to describe a circle. We can describe a circle um, using an equation like this. And yes, it's true, we could solve for y, right? We could say, okay, so that means that um, y squared is 1 minus x squared. So that means that y is, well, plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. Right? And, and so here you see there's a problem, right? Um, aside from the two ends of the circle, if x is not equal to plus or minus 1, if x is between minus 1 and 1, um, there are going to be two y values for every x value. One corresponding to the top of the circle, one corresponding to the bottom, right? The circle doesn't pass the vertical line test. Um, so maybe you decide to choose one side, right? So for the top half. So for the top half, we have y equals, um, and the square root, let's write that as a power function. Okay? And at the end of the chain rule section, we saw that we can indeed you know, um, compute power rule derivatives for now any real number power, right, including fractional powers, um, using the exact same rule as before. The exponent comes down, subtract one from the exponent. Um, so that means I, I know how to compute y prime, right? y prime is one half times, also chain rule involved here, right? We need to leave the inside alone, one minus x squared. So a half minus one gives me minus one half. Now I multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is minus 2x. And perhaps I choose to simplify. Right? I can cancel some 2s. I get minus x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And you might choose, knowing that the square root of 1 minus x squared was, was y to begin with, perhaps you decide to write this as minus x over y. Okay, very good. You can do that. Um, now, if you go ahead and try doing this for the negative root, you'll find you get the exact same answer. And then you wonder, maybe there's, maybe there's something going on. Maybe there's some shortcut. Um, maybe there's, there's some way to kind of handle both cases at once. Um, and there is. So what implicit differentiation does is it sort of makes an assumption. It says, you've got some equation like this, right? So now we've got not necessarily a function, but a relation. We've got an equation that's relating the variables x and y. 
the assumption that you're going to make is that there is some function that is defined by that relation. Right? There's some function that will satisfy the equation. And maybe that function doesn't satisfy the equation you know, everywhere. Maybe that function doesn't reproduce the entire set of points that satisfies that relation. Um, but it should reproduce at least part of the curve. Right? So, so this function here produces half the circle. If we had chosen the negative square root, it would produce the other half. And between the two, we get everything. So in implicit differentiation, you make this assumption that at least locally, you can find a function that satisfies the equation. Uh, the next step is to figure out how do you take the derivative of that function using only the equation that was given to you.